today. So today we are going to learn how you can do some role-based authentication in your Azure and your Blazor applications uh, when using authentication with remote authentication such as Azure Active Directory. So let's imagine this case or this is scenario. Let's say that you have your Blazor application, your Blazor WebAssembly application configured to use Azure Active Directory Business to Consumer, right? But you have your users' roles defined in your database. By default, this is not supported. So you need to do some custom uh, logic to support that. But the logic is actually very, very easy to use. Um, but before we start with that, please remember to like the channel, share the channel with your friends, to everyone you knew. You can share it in Twitter, in Facebook, in LinkedIn, in groups that you know, so we can get more users and get more likes, and I can keep making more videos more frequently for you. Also, check out the links that are in the descriptions, and there are also some Buy Me Coffee links too. I would really appreciate to be able to keep making more videos, right? Okay, so let's continue. How do we do that? How, how do we configure the role-based authentication in here? So, if you have already, uh, if you already have experience with the authorization attribute and how it works in .NET, uh, you, you know that usually you put like the authorize and you can specify the roles that uh, are going to be authorized or that are required for uh, that to work, right? So for example, in this case, um, to the ingredients page, I set it to authorize and to require the ingredients read permission or claim for the user to have access to that page. If the user does not have that claim or that permission, the user will not be able to see this page. So if I run the application, you will see that as soon as I try to enter that page, I will get an error indicating that I am not authorized to view that page. Let's wait a second for the application to load and we will continue. Okay, so you'll see that here if I go and hit ingredients, it starts doing the authentication. Now it requests me how I want to log in. I will log in with Twitter. I had I was already logged in, so it doesn't request me my username or password. And you will see that it's trying to complete the login, and it says that you are not authorized to access this resource because my user does not have the required claim or the role that the page is expecting, which is ingredients red. Okay. So the first thing you have to do to start configuring the authentication is this. When you have already configured the MSAL authentication, um, you will have something similar to this. You will not have the custom types defined in here. This will be just a call without the types. And you will not have this call either. So the first thing you need to do is uh, implement two custom types. A custom remote user account and a custom claims principal factory. This remote authentication set is actually the default one, so you can keep using that one. The custom remote user account is in case you, in case you want to have additional attributes in there, right? You can extend. And the custom factory or custom account claims principal factory is where most of your logic to extend user claims is defined. So you see that this class inherits from accounts principal factory and it has a type custom remote user account, right? You need to inject the IA access token provider accessor because this is required by the base class and you need to pass it. 
and since we are getting our roles from an API, we need a way to communicate to that API. So we are going to do that with an HTTP client to do the call to get the roles and add those to the claims. You need to override the create user async method, right? And the first call you need to do is getting the base user, right? So this will create your claims principal after um, login, for example. And then you need to verify if that user is authenticated. It means that the login was successful, so we can continue extending the, extending the claims principal, right? So one of the first things we need to do is converting our identity to a claims identity because the claims identity is the one that has the um, methods to allow us to add new claims, right? Now, since I am using Azure Active Directory and I'm already authenticating here, I, I know that I will have my OID in there. So I will just get it. This is my user object ID, right? Or the, the user's object ID, yeah, Active Directory, right? And then I'll do the get from JSON to this URL, right? I'll pass the parameters I need to pass. And then when we return that, it will return a string array because that's the way I was I defined it. And for each one of those, I will create a new claim. You see that all of those claims have the same name, right? So all of those, all of those will have the claim name, the type roles with different values. We have to do this um, so we can use the normal authorized attribute as we are using it in the uh, index page for the ingredients route. And then we just return the user, right? So now you will set it, you will see that now here in my API, I basically have these get user roles, I pass the user object ID. This is hard coded, right? Um, this application does not, was not really created for supporting uh, role based authentication. Um, so I don't have like role tables and things like that, right? So we are just hard coding the values so you have an idea of uh, what you need, how it works, right? And now, if I remember correctly, the role was ingredients red, right? I will add it. Actually, I will just add a new one. A normal application should work as I want it to work. I should be able to go into the ingredients page because my user will already have that claim defined for that role. So let's wait a couple of seconds for the application to load. Let's go to the ingredients page. Let's log in with Twitter. Okay, let's wait for the application the authentication to finish. And now see that I actually get the results and I am not getting the message that I, and that I am not authorized because my user already has the actual role that the page is expecting. So that's a simple way to do the um, role-based authentication or to extend your uh, role claims using Azure Active Directory business, uh, in your Blazor applications using remote authentication, for example, when using Azure Active Directory business to consumer. Remember, the first thing you need to do is basically add the, extend the MSA authentication call uh, to pass the types, right? Implement a custom user, a custom remote user account and a custom account claims principal, right? Go with this, extend the create user async, add your custom, your custom logic to retrieve the roles and add it to the claim in there. And in your desired pages, 
add the roles to the authorized attribute and that will be basically it. I hope this video has been very useful for you. Please remember to share the video, share the channel, like the videos and visit the links that you have in the description. Thank you very much and have a great day.